the first printer of 2026 has been released, the Creality Spark X i7. Does it compete with the other printers around that same price range and would I recommend it? My name is Mick, you're about to find out on the 3D Printing Zone. We'll start with the features of this printer, then we'll look at the pros, the cons, how it compares to other printers in their price range, and then we will finish off with whether or not we would recommend it. The size of the print bed on this machine is similar to other models coming in at 260 millimeters wide, 260 millimeters deep, and 255 millimeters tall. This printer can reach speeds up to 500 millimeters per second. Out of box, it comes with a hardened steel nozzle, which is very rare for a printer at this price range. The nozzle reaches up to 300 degrees Celsius and the bed heats up to 100 degrees Celsius. It does come with a touchscreen at 2.85 inches and it comes with a color filament system or a CFS, which is this box over here on the left. This one's considered a CFS light. There's not a lot to it besides putting the filament in and possibly adding Adding some desiccant beads. There's no motors on the rollers. The filament rolls freely. The only motor is at the top where the filament will be pushed to the head of the printer. Other color filament systems like Bamboo Lab, the AMS, and the box for the Chidi, those have motors not only where they extrude, but also inside with the rollers. I'll talk about some of the issues I've had with this one not having the rollers with motors. But before we do that, let's talk about the pros. First off, this printer is super easy to set up. This printer is called a Cartesian printer or a bed slinger, which means the bed moves forward and backward. Most bed slinger printers come in at least two parts where you have the gantry, the top part separate from the bottom part and you need to screw it on. This one doesn't come like that. It came out of box ready to print. It had two zip ties at the top I had to snip and then also some screws in the back. So setup was super easy. Let's talk about the bed. It is so easy to remove that plate and to put it back on. It passes the one hand test. Pull off the bed, take the print off and put the bed back on without using two hands. It's perfectly slotted in the back so the bed slides right into that slot. It doesn't mess up. I've had beds in the past that just don't align perfectly, but this one, every single time it just goes right on. Something else that is super easy is removing the nozzle. With some printers, you have to use screws to remove nozzles or you have to unplug things. But with this one, all you have to do is remove the front cover, pull off the silicon sock, and then lift this lever. To put a nozzle back on, you just do those steps in reverse. Attach the lever, put on the sock, and then put on the cover. I also really like that this came out a box with a hardened steel nozzle. Other printers at this price range usually come with a brass nozzle or a stainless steel nozzle and if you want to print more abrasive materials you need to buy an upgrade which is an additional cost. This is a pro to me, but also a nice feature to have, which is this bar at the front. It's a progress bar. It's also an indicator bar of whether or not your printer needs help or if it's printing something. And when the printer's not printing at all, it just has colors that can be streaming across or you can have it turn off automatically, whatever you'd like to do. Before we move to the next pro, let's test some prints and see how this does. Reality sent me this printer for the purpose of making this video and getting the word out there for 2026, one of the first printers to be released. In addition to sending me this printer, they also sent me four spools of filament. Let's load those four spools into the CFS light and start a print that's already added on the printer. This is my first time having a spool holder where you load the spools from the front instead of the top and you push the filament up instead of pushing it down. It wasn't a bad experience, I just had to feel for where that little entrance was instead of being able to see it from above. But the moment you stick the filament into the entrance, it starts grabbing it and pulling it through. If you buy filament from Creality and it has the RFID chip, that will automatically be detected in the CFS light, so you don't have to add the colors and the filament type on the printer. If you have a different brand of filament, all you have to do is add it right here on the screen. For the first print, I want to test multicolor since this is a multicolor printer. We're going to use something that's already on the printer, this little Spark X logo design. You're supposed to print this in white and a few different colors, but I'm just using the four that they sent me. If you've never seen a multicolor printer before, each time it needs to change colors because it has one nozzle, it has to push out the color that was in that nozzle before moving to the next one. Every time that push happens, it's called a purge and that purge is purging out waste or filament poop, which is where you get a bucket that looks like this. This print came out looking really good. 
It did waste some filament, but you will get that with any multicolor one nozzle printer. We have printers with multiple nozzles, but they are way more expensive than this one. Now let's try printing something we print on almost every printer, which is a Benchy. This Benchy came out looking really good. It finished in about 19 minutes, and I would say the bridging looks good, the finish looks good, and it just came out really clean. Something else I really like about this printer that some of my other printers still don't do that cost more money is when it's done printing, the bed's cooled, the nozzle's cooled, all the fans shut off, even the lights will shut off. This thing just disappears when it's not being used. It's not reminding me constantly with a fan going that it's turned on. Some of my other printers that constantly have a fan running or the lights on, I have to manually go and turn the switch off to just turn the printer off, which means the next time I want to start a print, I'm looking at my printers that are already turned on, not the ones that I have to go down and actually manually turn on. So because this one goes quiet and just disappears when it's not being used, I don't turn off the switch and it's ready to print anytime I need it, whether I'm at my house, I'm at work, I'm off doing a business trip, whatever it might be, I can just start a print remotely. Speaking of printing remotely, this comes with an app on the computer and on the mobile phone. I can find and download a file, slice it from the app and send it to the printer so I don't have to export a file onto an SD card. I can just send it to the printer straight from my phone or a computer. Let's talk about some of the AI features. This printer is equipped with spaghetti detection, which means if a print is printing and maybe the print falls off the bed and then it keeps pushing out filament it'll detect there's a fail and pause the print. When we get to the cons, we'll talk about my experience with the AI detection. I believe the camera on this does about 15 to 30 frames per second. I was getting more around 15 frames per second, which is still plenty when you're remote and you want to just look and see how your print is doing. Now let's talk about the CFS. Like I said earlier, this one is different. You load the spools from the front, not from the top. One advantage to that is all the PTFE tubes, they come out the top and just loop around to the printer. None of my other printers have this. Most of them just have one tube coming out the back or four tubes coming out the back. That means you need to have it pulled forward closer to the front of a desk or a dresser or whatever it's sitting on so that those tubes can loop around the back, come up and loop around. You have to have longer tubes. You have to make sure that space is clear. Otherwise, it will throw out errors that there's been a clog or some type of issue with those tubes. Not only can this print multicolor and multi-material, but if you have a spool with just a little bit left and you want to use it up before you go to the next one, this has the runout sensor, which is pretty typical for a lot of printers now. But when a filament runs out, it'll check to see if there's another filament that's that same type the same color and it will automatically switch to that one. Despite this being a CFS light, I was surprised to see you can look at the humidity levels right from the printer. This is a great test print because it looks at things like overhangs, it looks at bridging, tolerance tests. So this little piece right here, this little coin should come out. There's also a piece underneath here. And then you also look at another tolerance test where we will unscrew this piece. There is no sagging on this overhang. It's very clean and has a very nice bottom finish. Now that I've lifted this up, you can see the tolerance test worked really well. That was a 0.2 tolerance and that coin just fell right out. We can also see the bridging underneath here is nice and even. The tolerance around this box, it was supposed to fall out like it did and it fell right out. The overhangs or bridging on this section look really clean too. And I really don't see any stringing between this post, this post, and this ball over here on the left. Normally you see stringing going across these if there's any stringing issues. Let's try unscrewing this. Oh, easy, easy. No, no resistance at all. That screw came right out. I didn't even have to try. Printing a Benchy and the calibration test, that's great, but how practical is it? Would I add this to my 3D print farm? Something we print every day in our farm are these little octopus toys. They go on top of a bath bomb and kids absolutely love them. Let's try printing these on this printer. Those came out looking so good, and this is definitely something I could put 
in the print farm. Is it as good as one from a printer that's twice as expensive? We'll talk about that in a little bit. Like I mentioned earlier, Creality sent us this printer for the purpose of making a video and it is sponsored by Creality. I dropped a link in the description if you'd like to pick one up. We do receive a small commission for printers purchased through that link, but it doesn't cost any more to you. Before you click that link and decide to purchase this, let's talk about the cons. We'll first focus on the CFS light, then we'll talk about the printer and some of its features. The first thing I noticed on the CFS light is because the filament does not have a motor that's constantly keeping the tension tight. When it's doing a filament change and it's pulling out the filament to put in a new one, you can see these spools are getting loose. This was never an issue for me having those spools loose, but I wonder if you did a print that was 24 hours long, if that spool will ever start to unwind too much and cause tangles. Again, I didn't see anything myself, but it just looks like something that could possibly be an issue in the future. I mentioned the app before, and it's really nice. You can go through, there's a lot of online models you can choose from, but something I ran into, especially with a new printer that isn't released yet, is finding models that I could use on this printer. When I tried to print with one of those models, it doesn't even give me the option because it's not the same type. Now that could just be an issue because this hasn't been released yet, but I'd love to see any model available, not dependent on the printer. When I gave this feedback to Creality, they said, oh, all you have to do is click on Flow Print at the top. And they're right. When you click on Flow Print, I can check any of these models, click on Print, go to Next, and although my printer is busy, it does give me the option to use this printer. So disregard what I just said. As long as you click on Flow Print from the app, you can have all these models available to you on this printer. The CFS Lite does not support TPU, which is flexible filament. This one is not a big con because most printers with these type of filament changers don't support TPU unless it's a very hard shore TPU, but it's just something to mention. This CFS unit does not heat up. The advantage of heating up is to help dry out that filament before your next print or while it's printing. More advanced filament systems can heat up. You can put desiccant beads in the slots in the back. And one advantage of not heating up is you don't need an external power cord. So this whole thing, the printer, the CFS, it runs off of one power cord. Since this printer is a Cartesian printer or a bed slinger, there's not really a good place for the camera. For this printer, it's on the left side. I've also seen them on the right side. With any printer like this, the camera just doesn't have that good of an angle. It gives you a side angle, but nothing from the front or from the front right or front left, like you see with Core XY printers. That's not really a con for this printer alone. That's any printer that I've seen like this. If I really cared about it, I could design something that pulls the camera out so I can get a better angle. Speaking of cameras, the quality on this looks like it's 720, maybe 1080p. It's not the best, it's not the worst, it just gives you what you need to see. I printed off a tiny cylinder hoping that it would fall off the bed. The bed adhesion on this is so good it didn't fall off itself so I knocked it off the bed just to see if it would detect spaghetti. In my one test of doing this it did not detect the spaghetti. That's not the end of the world. Even my most expensive printers sometimes miss spaghetti detection and I haven't seen any Cartesian printer or bed slinger do a good job with spaghetti detection yet. But that's just something to keep in mind. Now let's talk about how this printer compares to other printers in its same price range and then show you a comparison to a more expensive printer. I printed off the same calibration cube on the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. That comes in at about the same price depending on when you're looking at this printer compared to the Bamboo and what sales are going on. Because when I look at these two, I would say this printer did better than Bamboo Lab in most categories. The A1 Mini overhangs were okay. This top one did a pretty good job. You can see this bottom one, it's just not that clean. I can't even push out the coin, so that coin is stuck in there. And this piece is stuck as well. Let's see if I can pull it out. There we go. The screw is actually just as easy as the Spark X i7. It's got a nice consistent bridging on the bottom. I would say the bridging looks pretty good on this one too, but comparing the two of these, I would say the Spark X i7 did a better job than the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, which is priced at about the same depending on when you're purchasing these. When I printed this on the Bamboo Lab H2C, which is around 2,500 US dollars, where this one sits around 339 US dollars, I'm kind of torn on the results. 
You can see the tolerance for the coin, it just dropped out. The tolerance for this little box dropped out. The bridging looks consistent to the other two models. The screw on all three of these was equally just as good. That tolerance is really great. There's no stringing. I haven't seen stringing on any of these printers for this tolerance test. Now let's look at the overhang. Just like the A1 Mini, I feel like this one is not as clean as the Spark X i7. It looks like it bulges a little bit as it gets higher up. That has to do with cooling the part and cooling management. The bridging is very consistent with the other two printers as well. The last thing to check is how well can you see through one layer of material? Did it give a nice clean first layer? This one you can see a little bit of light coming through the very top. So that's this top portion. I think there was one or two layers. So you can see a light coming through there, but there's no light passing through this one layer of material you should be able to see light if it wasn't a clean first layer but this is so clean you can't even see anything pass through it no surprise on this print seeing that the tolerance is a little too tight it's almost like this was printing too close to the bed you can see there's no light coming through however when we look at the h2c print you can see a lot of light passing through it i might just need to recalibrate this printer that's kind of crazy you can see that much light and you can even see it on this second layer a tiny bit and definitely through the top layers of this box. So surprisingly, the Spark X i7 did as good of a job or better than these other two prints. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you is the Octopus. We print these every day in our print farm on the Chibi Q2 with the box, which is their filament system. When I compare these side by side, they look identical except for the eyes. You can see the eyes on the octopus from the Chidi are just a little more smooth. They look a little more crisp. Since these are going to kids, I don't think they're gonna notice the difference. I notice them, other people might not. But that printer is twice as expensive and it's a Core XY printer, which isn't fair to compare that to a bed slinger. They're just on different playing fields. Before I give you my recommendation, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We have a ton of printers and videos being created right now. And some of them are really exciting. If you're looking for a really good beginner friendly multicolor 3D printer, I would recommend this printer. The quality might not be as good as a Core XY printer, but if this is your first printer, or even if it's your second or third, and you still wanna have great quality, a printer that just works, this one has done really good for us and we do recommend it. Now, if you're looking for something that's a Core XY and can print a little faster, maybe a little cleaner, take a look at this video.